guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber Fosso with Jean Costly and today we are back again guys with Fate Zero episode 6, season 2. So last episode we saw Kirichibu's childhood yeah. and we also saw what fucked him up and it's bad. <laughs> Midnight Mass. <laughs> Midnight Mass, literally. Midnight Mass fucked him up. So his father was a mage doing research on vampires but he didn't know that. Uh, he knew his father wanted to, you know, well, he was working on, on flowers, you know, make up flowers bloom forever, you know, yeah. stop them from dying. And he had an assistant, a young assistant, that sure. Kitsugu liked very much. And, Surely. And she was fascinated by the work his father was doing, and she, she saw it as, you know, he could do so much good for modern medicine and stuff, which technically is true, like, immortality is, is pretty cool all about... It's a great dream. It's usually a, a bad reality. Pretty sure it's the first <laughs> gift. So. Yes, but still, she was fascinated with this, and eventually she stole uh, a test sample, and she tried it on herself, and it turned really bad. She turned into a vampire. Kiritsugu had the opportunity to kill her. He didn't, and so she went on a rampage, and the entire island turned into vampires. So executors and mages showed up to kill everyone. Yep. So Kiritsugu was recruited by... Okay, she had a cross, so I'm guessing she was an executor. But then she's known by the mages, and it looks like she does jobs for mages. Like her mercenaries? Maybe? So I don't really know what her deal was, but she had she, a cross. Or maybe it was the cross of the the, the, the church I, guy. I think it was just a, a cross, because she didn't have the altar of the church people. Did she? No, she didn't. I saw a cross, you know, being broken, but maybe it was the, the church guy's cross. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. In any case, she, she just showed up and she saved him. Then she told him everything, so he went back home and killed his father. Yeah, he stabbed him and he shoot him. Yeah, to stop him from doing this all over again somewhere else. Yay! He nice. must have been like 12 or something. He was really young. Yeah, 12 to 14 max. Yeah, so nothing a child should go through. And now we know why he's, he's dead in the eyes. So that's great. <laughs> Let's jump in this episode now and... Uh, I mean, now we understand him a little better, but let's see what happens next. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when these episodes come out and check out our Patreon for the full reactions. All right, let's Ooh. watch it, guys. Let's go. A slightly older, but still younger <laughs> Kiritsugu. A whole can you give him? Early 20s, and I don't know. <laughs> He's already dead. But I love him. <laughs> We're just jumping back, like... I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. i I'm not saying that he's still a kid or anything and he should live his, his youth and stuff <laughs> because, yeah, but still. He's so cool looking. <sighs> Sacrifice. See, he wanted to. He used to want to save people like this, but reality is harsh. There's always gonna be someone, you know. So, the Holy Grail Warden. 
maybe that's a, you know, that's a little idea that's gonna bloom into, yeah, ending all fights. Mm. You're watching this episode after the conversation from, you know, with Saber. It explains everything. He wanted, he wanted to save them. Like, he used to be so much like Saber. Ah. But then shit happened. Well, I mean, it's the way, the way he was taught and then reality and doing the work, you know? Yeah, just like the island. Yeah, mages that don't care. For the sake of research. Honestly, a show about Kiritsugu's youth would be fucking cool. Sad, but cool. He's John Wick! He's just missing a dog. No, he, he got the dog got killed already. It's over. <laughs> and like she's not around anymore, so maybe this is the episode where she dies. Aww. You know? <laughs> so smooth, you know? No wonder he's badass. Look at his teacher. I know they are going around killing people and stuff. I know. I've secured a vehicle. <laughs> Drives around casually in an ambulance. <laughs> Shit. Oh no. This is bad. Ah, oh, this is really bad. Ah. No way can- I mean... He's gonna have to blow the plane, you think? Probably, yeah. I'm like, the plane is gonna do this? Will she survive? Hmm. 
むしろ着陸の方が不安でねあんたなら I mean they're not showing us her face きっと励ましてるつもりか OK 嬉しいこったね<笑>着陸の方はなんとかするなさてこの後ろの化け物たちはどうしてってるどうしてってるどうしてってるどうしてってるどうしてってるどうしてってるどうしてってるどうしてってるどうしてってるどうどう言い聞かせようと諦めそうになかったからねそんなに僕は見込みのない弟子だったのか見込みがありすぎたんだよどうすぎてねどういう意味だい指先を心と切り離したまま動かすっていうのはね大概の殺し屋が数年がかりで身につける覚悟なんだ坊やはそれを最初から持ち合わせていたとんでもない資質だよ I don't think it's a gift I think it's a curse I think he was pushed for that too. 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 Although right now, what he wants to do is also what he should do in his mind, so I don't know. True. I don't think, and I mean, neither of them is lying, you know, about to themselves about what's about to happen, but they're playing it off like it's, you know, all chill. Jesus Christ! And he's doing it, you know, he's already this cold. It's fucked up. For a second, I believed it. You know that she was gonna land all fine. How could she land when she's the only one who's not bitten? The three hundred passengers and crew staff members that are ghouls. She couldn't land. That's the thing. It's flooring me that he had to do this. I think that the only reason why he's still waking up in the morning is because he's able to separate his feelings. He's not showing any emotion. Come on, feel it. Oh. See, we talked about this last episode.
I love the ending song. I love the way these episodes, these last two episodes have been Where made, just you know? Fall? Jesus Christ, God! He's been so... <laughs> that went quick. I'm not laughing at him, you know? It's the... The irony of this? It's the, it's not the no. irony, it's, it's the shock of just how much shit he went through. Okay, I I don't know, the way he talked in the end, how he said to Shirley, you know, if she had landed, you know, there's no saying how many people would have died. I do, I, I'm wondering if he, because she definitely knew he was gonna do this, you know. I felt like it was some sort of code. She was like, get ready, you know, prepare a nice bed and stuff for me when I come home. I felt like... They're talking codes about, you of know, blow me up. Of course. They, they knew what they had to do, of yeah. course. And then she smiled in the end, so I don't think she was surprised at all that he did this. But then the way he talked after, I'm almost wondering if he thought that she wanted to land safely and, and he just couldn't allow it to happen. If that's true, then he's torturing himself so much more. No. <sighs> ah. I think... Both of them knew that she couldn't just Yeah, in my opinion, with they all of knew. those... Ghoul or dead apostle. Uh, apostle? No, I know that. Yeah. I know that. But the way he said, or maybe it's just how he tries to justify it to himself. You know, she told me to do this because there's absolutely no way that she can get home safely without killing others. So, I think it's more of that. Yeah. And we talked about this last episode about how the guilt of not killing Shirley was probably on his shoulders because then everyone else died. And then that would justify making sacrifices. But now he's trying to justify his guilt of killing uh, Natalia by saying that by doing so, we save so but many people. It's the same train of thought. He still had to kill someone that he cares about. That he cares well, about. I, I, I think this is definitely different because she did nothing wrong and he cared about her. And yeah, she's like a mother to him. Whereas the father, he felt, I think he felt anger. Like he, he totally detached himself from his emotions back then. But maybe there's, there was a little bit of anger and revenge when it came to his father because of what happened to Shirley and the island. But when it comes to her, she did nothing. So yeah, I'm, I, there's a part of me and it's not a sadistic part of me that's happy to, that he cried, you know? Even though he looked like he was losing it, I'm happy he showed some emotions because it's, she's right. He's turning into a machine and we've know. seen him in the future and he still has emotions. Like he, there's still a part of him in there that's saying, what if we escape? What if we run away with our daughter? You know, what if like, there's a part of him that's still human, but it's bare, bur buried under years of, of, of coldness. And I think, you know, th that's why I, you know, I said last episode that no kid should go through this because you're so young, you're not going to grow up fine. You're going to grow up messed up if you go through this at, at this age. You know, maybe that's why he's, he's even worse than she was, you know, he's colder and stuff. She says that he has the gift of detaching himself from his emotions. I think he was pushed to be like that because like, otherwise he would have lost it just like he did in the end here. You know, either you detach yourself from your emotions or you're going to drown in them. You break down, yeah. Yeah. And it's not a gift to detach yourself from your emotions. It's a curse, especially for, for well, him. It can come in handy sometimes. I'm saying it's a curse for him because okay. it's allowing him to go down this path of, you know, any sacrifice is fine as long as we get to the the ultimate dream of we can save everyone, you know? Because, like, we saw him earlier when he was a kid. He wanted to save people, but then his desire... And maybe, you know, when he hears Saber say, you know, oh, every life is, is important and, you know, you save the world by saving everyone you know, and not making those sacrifices. Maybe he's thinking, oh, you have such a child, a childish way of seeing the world. There's some naive about what's yeah, going on. Yeah, because he was there. I feel like he was there and he had this same dream of, you know, saving everyone, not sacrificing a single person, but then he's had to make so many sacrifices for the sake of this dream. Well, you know what's confusing about? Because, yes, I think that you're right that he's, Thinking that maybe Saber has a, a naive way of thinking, thinking it. Like, you need to save everyone to have a better world. But technically, both of them went through some shits. Yes, she was yes. King Arthur, did But then, it? like, look at this. Okay. Saber on the battlefield knows that people are going to die. Yeah. But she is pushing and pushing because every life that she gets to save is one more life. You no, know, one more person that, that is alive. That's great. 
that's her goal. Pros prosperity, saving, you know, her country and stuff. That's her goal. And for that, she needs to save everyone. Every life is precious. That's, that's, that comes from, you know, Christianity. That comes from her teachings. That comes from her being the king and stuff. Kiritsugu. Similar sort of dream of saving everyone. But how did he learn to get there? You know, not with responsibilities, not with, you know, uh, religion or anything, but through hardships and having to make sacrifices. So his ultimate dream is still to save everyone because that's why, that's why he wants to use the Grail so that there's no more violence in the end. But in order to get there compared to Saber, who's like, every life is precious, he's saying, yeah, eventually I'll save everyone, but to do that, I'm willing to make sacrifices. And I think his dream got twisted through the years because now it's not just let's kill let's kill one life because i absolutely have no other way of saving everyone it's mm -hmm. let's allow these people to die because i mean eh, sacrifices must be made you know it's like yeah, he's can. losing himself so much in that machine mentality of what he should do in order to get what he wants i do think that after Natalia's dead, he might have lost himself. He did. <laughs> she she kind of was able to bring up the humanity in him. To uh, not, he, to not he, let, let him be a, a machine guy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what killing machine you know. That's literally the last time they spoke. She told him he needed to, you know, allow himself to do stuff for him sometimes. But uh, like I said, I think that there's a part of him maybe that, that confused that because the ultimate dream of having the grill and saving everyone, saving the world, I think is what some, it's something he wants, but in order to get there, he's he's being the cold machine. He thinks he has to be the cold machine that needs to make those sacrifices. So he's got the attitude that she was afraid he was gonna keep. But after you know all of this, he he hopes to get that moment of peace. Which one do you think would who should be better? I then? think he lost himself, unfortunately. Like I'm not I, I don't want to glorify war or anything because I I think once. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made, but I would say, you know, if you're not the person making the sacrifice yourself, it's not your place to say anything. Like, I would not sacrifice anyone. I mean, because it's not worth it. Realistically, I can admit and realize that we cannot save everyone. But like both Saber right. and Kiritsugu are agree, I think, that sacrifices mu must be made. But Kiritsugu, he's giving a lot of himself. So I think he's willing to sacrifice himself too. But his understanding of sacrifice is that if he has to sacrifice other people to get his goal, it's fine. Whereas Saber would be saying, the only person I am willing to my, sacrifice is myself. myself. Which that's come and that comes which from. Which she should do technically. But that's the that's the mentality that Gilgamesh loves so much about her. You know, she's a martyr. You know, she wants she she wants to take on everything herself because so other people don't suffer. Whereas for Kiritsugu, I think he's been broken already, and he the the slap of reality he got too early just destroyed his hero. You know. Uh, Mentality. Uh, mentality. Persona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Complex. <laughs> complex. Hero complex, you know? Because he wanted, he was like that before, but then, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's having to do those sacrifices and killing the people he loves. But also, in order not to drown in his emotions, he's convincing himself, oh, it was necessary. So unfortunately, yeah. the, the wall gets thicker and thicker. If he doesn't, it's gonna just crumble in guilt. Yeah. Uh, I think we're more <sighs> of a cyber type of hero complex. Like I'm more we, like a saber we type We need to too. sacrifice ourselves to save as many people as we can. But we're, well, I think we're more re uh, re realistic but we in talk the fact that we know that we cannot save everyone. We talked right? about this, and I don't remember if it's in this show or another one. No, after watching Marvel's but, movie. No, but we talked about this <laughs> in the reaction. But, you know, I said before that, as you know, every life is, is I think it was in Madoka Magica, actually. But every life is, um, um, no. which actually would make sense because the two shows, you know. Well, but still, I don't care. Uh, I, I said before that, you know, as soon as you have to sacrifice one life to get to your goal, maybe your goal is not worth it, you know, because we do see heroes sometimes who have to make the decision one life for the many. But when you do that too often and you start disregarding the value of someone's life, the goal might not be worth it. True. So I think that's what happened to Kiritsugu. Unfortunately, he's a very lost little boy, but yeah. I do care about him. I want to give him a hug so bad. I'm kind of scared. He needs to be saved. 
I'm kind of scared what's gonna happen when Iris was gonna die. Yeah. To be honest, because he do loves and care about and cares about her. Yes, I know. Maybe she's gonna be able to make things to different. Maybe find him be before dying. I hope. I mean, the way I understand it, like the more they get close to getting the grail, the more she loses herself. And when they get the grail, so basically, it's like I I keep Iris Veil, but then I I sacrifice the whole world, or I save the world and I lose Iris Veil. Because he's not going to get the grail if he keeps Irisville, you know? So, and that's why he's saying, uh, I'm going to kill you. Because if he makes sure to get the grail, like, the more he kills servants, the more he gets close, the more he kills her. So, yeah. He's, once again, going to be responsible for the sacrifice of someone he cares about. <laughs> Which is so bad. <laughs> but he's such, just, a good, he's such a good character. This is so bad. <laughs> he's such a good character, though. The possibilities are endless for how this show is going to end with them. Oh, boy. I'm excited for, for where they're going after this. I'm pretty sure... I'm, sorry, guys. I cannot speak tonight. Yeah, you can. It's I'm pretty fine. sure that he's not going to be okay by the end of the show, but at least give him some redemption. Give him some peace of mind. Some peace, maybe. Yeah. He needs to talk to Saber again, I think. That could help. <laughs> maybe. I, if he was willing to listen. I think he sees her as a child. That, that would happen. <laughs> he sees her as a child who's, you know, blinded by her dreams and her... her values whereas he's just he's the slap of reality unfortunately she got hope she got hope yeah but he lost that a long time ago yeah anyway so i really really pretty love... happy that we saw two episodes in yes. about I'm really past. Happy. i love that the way these episodes were done too you know it felt more important almost like the fact that we the you know the no opening no ending almost like well, it felt like a mini movie i am glad that we saw these two right after we saw him giving his hard speech to a uh, saber about reality well, check, I mean, yeah. but then the last episode should have happened after then did it happen right at the end of the that the, the episode time? where they killed tokyo me should have happened after true it's it still happened after the speech sort of so we're fine but it's, 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 it's okay. It's, 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 it's still, fine. It's still good. It, it's it's still good that it happened after we've done so much. Like, because like I could imagine watching the show and seeing Kiritsugu do all these things and be like, "The fuck, man! Like, why are you doing this?" Because like, the disrespect towards yeah. other mages, uh, the way he he, ch he didn't cheat, but the way he sort of cheated in order to kill them, the the way he tricked them and mm -hmm. stuff. You would be like judging his character hard, just like Saber is judging the character hard. But then we, we both tend to keep an open mind as much as possible when we do reactions because if, we, if possible, yes. Yeah. yeah, because we want to give every character the benefit of the doubt. And even if you know you're a bad character, like uh, you know the bad guy, sometimes it's it's still so interesting to to look at the la layers, you know, Trying of, of the character's the mind reason behind their actions. Yeah. So and with Kiritsugu, like he's not even a bad guy, you know. So. So then, He's a broken man. But then you watch the show and you judge the character and then BAM! BAM! Two episodes in a row of why he's like this. And you're like, UGH! <laughs> it's good writing. It's really oh. good. And I really love them. So the both, the, both the episodes. I was surprised to learn that he had 66 bullet with his... Uh, no, but they said it before. You just forgot. Yeah, I forgot about it. But... Yeah, I don't think it would have, he would have gone through that again. If he lost all of his bullets, so he needs to be careful about those, right? Well, maybe he still has ribs, but then like he needs <laughs> to keep some, but he could probably... Yeah. <laughs> those don't grow back. Now, I know, but you can get rid of a few and be fine. It's true. <laughs> I know. In any case, I don't think he goes around just wasting bullets either, but it's fine. Like, it's such an intense bullet. Like, you don't just use it whenever. You got to think about when you want to mm -hmm. use it. In any case. All right. Okay, so once again, very good episode. If you guys want to see the next one right away, it is on Patreon already. You can check it out. The link is in the description below. And if you don't, the next one will be on YouTube next week, guys. So stay tuned. I'm going to see you then. Yes. Bye, Bye. guys.